What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Daily Draft brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin, just minutes away. From beautiful Lambeau Field, I am your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum, and today I am so very excited. Uh, the last time you saw a prospect primer from us, I would guess it was Isaac Durendo. We took a little bit of a trip to negative town. Okay, I, I, I was tough on him. I mean, look, he's a, a round five grade guy for me. I'm not going to have that many nice things to say, but he was a fan request. We did it. I'm happy we did it. I'm glad that my Garendo takes are, are out there. So if he really, really turns out, he can dunk on me or, or fans of whatever team takes him can dunk on me. Uh, but we are not taking a trip to negative town today. We are talking about one of my very favorite players in this class somebody that I am going to be higher on than consensus, and somebody that is not going to be a Green Bay Packer. And that uh, is Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy. I love, love, love Xavier Worthy, and I loved him before he did what he did at the Combine, which is, of course, the thing that we have to discuss. He's the fastest man alive. Kid's so fast. He's so fast, he makes other fast people look not fast. And, yes, that is an Adam Sandler version of the longest yard reference. Um, I love Xavier Worthy. And he, look, all cards on the table. He broke the 40-yard dash record at the NFL Combine. So, like, liking him, I get it. How can it be, how, how it can be viewed as lazy. Well, Ross, you're so obsessed with RAS. You're so obsessed with athletic testing. Okay, go look at the Xavier Worthy clips on my timeline. Go look at the film that I have actually shared from him and the things that he's able to do. And, and frankly, I, I, and we'll talk about this, a limited role at Texas. Not limited in usage, but limited in what they asked him to do just because they knew what they had on their hands. Um, broke the 40-yard dash record at the Combine, running a 4-2-1. Here's some hard-hitting analysis for you. He's good at football. Okay, John Ross was not good at football. You can go back and watch his Washington tape. He was a projection. I actually don't think Xavier Worthy is that much of a projection. He is good at football. He is good at wide receiver. He's a good player. And, and again, it's like, wow, this is, I'm glad I tuned into this. This is really helpful analysis. I get it. But guys, being good and running a 4 2 1 has a chance to be super special. Like being able to play football, you can't just grab like Usain Bolt and tell him to play wide receiver. You, you might be fun. But there is some play in football to play in football. And guys, Xavier Worthy can play football. And that's that's what you could you could tell I'm getting excited. Like that's what gets me excited about Xavier Worthy and the type of football player that he could be at the NFL level. Um, specifically excellent at the top of the route. And that's where some of these speedsters really struggle. But you can see, I mean, there was a uh blaze out for a touchdown that he ran that's on my my X or my Twitter timeline that was just, I mean, like <sighs> made me sweat. Um, another, you know, good outbreakers for first downs and, and like when asked to do, to do stuff, he did stuff. And again, like, oh, that's super awesome analysis, but like when Texas, and that's why I would say he, he does have some upside, uh, go balls and screens and slants. He was almost treated like DK Metcalf with a few more screens at Texas. They just wanted to get the ball in his hands. But then, like I said, you, you run a blaze out for a touchdown in a big 12 game, you pick up third downs you, you, you got wiggle after the catch like he can run routes you, you i've seen it that's what the big thing about scouting is for me what can you do not what did you do necessarily all the time what can you do and i saw him run real routes i watched a football player who runs a 421 run real routes against real corners in a real conference in the big 12 and that's why i get so excited about xavier worthy um, tracks the ball really well and doesn't have to slow down. That's helpful when you have four, two, one speed. He does a good job tracking the football in the air. And, and again, I, I think he was a little bit misused by Texas. I think that Xavier worthy could have done more things and, and, and by more, I don't necessarily, again, I'm not necessarily talking about usage, but I am talking about like different ways they could like, I think they could have, you know, run dagger concepts with him. I think, uh, you, you could have actually had him run a, a route tree, run slot fades, run, you know, run smash, run dragon, run all sorts of, of, of you know, fun concepts with the 72, like run, run cool stuff. They, they didn't usually, you know, usually with slants goes screens and, and that's fine. And uh, they had good offense. 
And they had a lot of other mouths to feed, right? Jonathan Brooks, good player. You go back, B. John Robinson, good player. Rashawn Johnson, good player. Jatavion Sanders in this class, good player. A.D. Mitchell, good player. A lot of mouths to feed on that Texas offense. A lot of mouths. So a little bit of understanding that he was not, you know, a 1,400-yard guy, a 70-reception guy. I mean, they had a lot of mouths to feed at Texas. Um. And, and, and I, I will say, you know, again, as I mentioned here, can this is in my notes, can actually work in the intermediate level of the field. I've seen enough from Xavier Worthy's route running that you you don't have to run the three true outcome plays of screen, slant, go. You don't have to do that. He can be a part of a real NFL offense, in my opinion. I I, I think he's a faster tank dealt, which is kind of high praise, uh, but that that's, that's what I see, and, and that's what – as we move to the to the con side and, and certainly move to why he probably won't be a Green Bay Packer outside, of course, of the fact that they have four guys that I think they like that are young. But I, I think the league is protecting these lighter players like like Tutu Atwell can survive. Tank Dell can survive. Some of these lighter receivers can survive. But boy, <laughs> uh, you know, I thought in that tight compression stuff. That 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 they had them wearing the no bowl stuff. Like I thought he looked like a stick figure. I mean, he looked like a guy that I would I would not I would say, well, that's a track athlete. That's not a football and and he doesn't play football like a track athlete, but just looking at the human being, he looked like a track athlete, and that's probably right. He ran a four two one, but he looked like a track athlete at the combine. He's not particularly long, and guys, 165 pounds is crazy. If he was 5'8 at 165, that would be a conversation. But he's average size dude. He's 5'11 and something. I think he hits Green Bay's like preferred height profile. I think he's like a fine height packer. 165 is crazy. 5'9, 165, that's a little bit small. 5'11, 165, again, it's a stick figure. He has fourth percentile weight. Height adjusted, that would be even lower. I think there's you you have to acknowledge the injury risk at that density. You have to acknowledge even with the player protection rules that exist, in breakers he might die. Not actually die but like are you going to run are you going to run as I said are you going to run dagger? You're the Green Bay Packers, are you going to line Christian Watson up in the slot, have him run a vertical and then feed Xavier Worthy into a strong safety on an 18-yard in running dagger? Now, he's probably not going to ever be on the Green Bay Packers, but at the NFL level, that's a concern. You're going to run him on a drag route? You, you're going to let Quay Walker hit him? You're going to let TJ Edwards hit him? I don't know, man. There are some numbers that you just can't yada yada away, and 165 pounds is one of those numbers. As far as on the football field, the actual football field drops. I think they, to me, their concentration drops and not hand-eye coordination drops, but they exist. And, you know, I talked about it with fumbles and uh, on a, pu- a plus side for Garendo. Drops for me at the wide receiver position are primarily a, uh, a tiebreaker. They're not a, a round setter. They're not a grade getter. Um, if you have drop issues, it, it, it's more used for me to break ties and, move you up and down within kind of my my round grade than it is to because I mean you see guys like Christian Watson way better drop rate in year two Jordan Nelson got rid of the drops Devontae Adams got rid of the drops James Jones got rid of the drops like to me a they're more random than people normally like would admit and and b they seem to go away as guys get confidence work work you know with the jugs machine whatever but like a lot of really really good players and a lot of really good Green Bay Packers got rid of the drops so um, that's not going to affect me much, but we're on the negative side of a player that I have a really good grade on. So we got to talk about something. The route tree has to develop. Now I have right here in the notes, is that Texas's fault or his probably Texas, but that doesn't mean that this expansive route tree and this understanding of leverage and zone coverage and how to beat man and how to beat zone and where to stop. And like that, it's just not there. It's not on his tape. I mean, it is in, in some instances, but not with the frequency that you'll see it with other wide receivers that you would want to take this high. And again, I'm, I'm willing to blame Texas for that. And, you know, kind of the lack of imagination of the way to use this. And again, Texas ran a good offense. They scored a ton of points, had a good quarterback, had a good tight end, had another good wide receiver, had three really good running backs. So they weren't spending their entire offensive game plan, figuring out how to try to get Xavier worthy of the ball. 
he was involved in it. He's a, a factor, but it's not like he was clear in a way, you know, just the number one guy on his team in the way that like a Leggett was for South Carolina. It's like, how do we get Xavier the ball in year five? It was not how do we get, and Xavier, of course, I ended up using a guy with the same name. How do we get Leggett the ball if you're South Carolina where you don't have a ton of other superstars? Texas has draft picks all over the place. I mean, A.D. Mitchell's top 50. Jatavion Sanders is top 60. Brooks is top 60, in my opinion. B. John Robinson just went seventh. You're not game planning Xavier Worthy if you're Sark. You're using him, but you're not. Like, this is not like we, we run the offense through Xavier Worthy. No, we don't. We run the offense, frankly, through Jonathan Brooks and B. John Robinson. That's who we run the offense through. Okay. Um, and then how many teams is he just off the board for? If we're talking about cons, we're talking about value. How many teams see 165 pounds? Just, yeah, we're not going to do it. It's interesting, too, because, like, you think McVay, right? Because, like, Matt LaFleur runs sort of the McVay system. Well, if we're going to run a ton of outside zone, we need these, these wide receivers who can block. McVay actually takes the little guys. Like, the Atwell kid plays for McVay. So that, that part of it's kind of interesting in that, like Matt's number one probably offensive influence has taken an itty bitty wide receiver, and that would be uh, Tutu Atwell out in out in L.A. Now they don't run their offense through him; their offense runs through Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup and Kyron Williams. But as far as like will 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 you take this guy? Will you agree to do this? Well, his number one offensive. Uh, you know, influence did in Sean McVay. So that's sort of interesting. Let's just dive into the Packers fit. In theory, he'd be awesome. Uh, you know, Christian Watson struggles to stay healthy. I don't know how much stock you want to put in, in Bo Melton. So like, as far as a guy that stretches the field, he'd be great. Him and Christian together would be insane. You know, you, you have him and Christian rotating in, running goes, whatever. Musgrave threatening the seam. Like there would just be oceans. If you had Xavier Worthy, Christian Watson, and Luke Musgrave on the same team, the amount of space that Tucker Craft, Romeo Dubs, and Dontavion Wicks, and Jaden Reed, frankly, would have to operate in would be bananas because you just would have so much stress on these defenses, especially if anybody was trying to play single high. I mean, it would just be so stressful with Watson, Worthy, and Musgrave all on the same team. In reality, people might not even be on their board. In reality, they might not be willing to take him until like round five. And buddy, he ain't gonna be there. He might just be like, "We, what would we do with this kid?" He can't. He can't run block, and that's my next point. How is he gonna run block at 165 pounds? He's not. So how does he fit in Matt's system? He might not, especially if you're gonna do reduced formations. The hell are you gonna do with this kid in bunch spread? Fine, cool, whatever. Yeah, but how many times did the Jordan Love Packers offense succeed out of a? bunch you know reduced formation and then use their speed to, to utilize the expanded field well that's fine and worthy coming out of a bunch to open space is very exciting idea but it's a dead giveaway because he can't dig anybody out in the run game at 165 pounds he's just not going to do it so it's kind of like i said it's a dead giveaway that you're throwing the ball or you're running at least away from that side that that's tough um and then my last note, uh, would Brian Gutekunst actually jump into the Green Bay, the Green Bay, before drafting a 165-pound wide receiver? Maybe. I, I don't. I'd be happy to be wrong. Um, he would be, as I have coined, a pants-off pick. Just because, you know, like I said, what, what him and Watson and Musgrave could do together, it could be special. But Goody's not taking a 165-pound wide receiver. Like Goody's barely taking a 190 pound wide receiver, guys. He's not taking a 165 pound wide receiver. And I, I, I say it all the time don't speak in absolutes when referring to the NFL draft. We don't know. It would be so crazy. It would. Uh, overall, great. I really like him. I really like Tank Dell. As I said, I, I kind of view Worthy as a faster Tank Dell. He wasn't as productive as Tank Dell, but Tank Dell had the, the Leggett syndrome. I mean, Tank Dell was easily Houston's best guy. Easily. Easily. Um, solid round one grade for me is wide receiver five uh, after you know the big three, and then I think Brian Thomas Jr. Overall player, 25. I mean, he's a round one player for me. 
And I'm willing to let the league protect him because I think he's good at football. And if you get a good football player who runs a 421, 42140, you can play for me. And, and that is my final analysis is that Xavier Worthy is a good football player who happens to run a 421. Not John Ross, who ran a 422, and you had to try to teach him to play football. Xavier Worthy can play football and he can run a 42140. Can he stay healthy? Is the league going to protect him at 165 pounds? Who knows? The Green Bay Packers are going to take him at 165 pounds? Probably not. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you are on the podcast side, we appreciate it so much. How can you help us out? Buy the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. Use promo code DAILY. That is D-A-I-L-Y uh, for 10% off of that bad boy. And you can enjoy so much of, of what I've put into it, what the team has put into it, what Jacob Morley has put into it, what Jacob Westendorf has put into it. It's, it's just such an awesome thing. And, and buy everybody else's Packers draft guide too, not just ours, but, but, but buy ours because I make money off of that. Um, check us out over at Packer Report. I'm at Ross Uglum on X, formerly known as Twitter, and do everything that you're supposed to do right here on the Pack a Day podcast YouTube. Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you can get every piece of Packers content that you need on a daily basis. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Go Pack Go!